In this review we take a look at a model in the Diecast Masters Core Classics line. The Core Classics are either older models or more value oriented. This particular model wins the prize for the longest name. And it is a Caterpillar CT660 day cab tractor with an XL120 low profile HDG trailer with a Caterpillar CB534D XW vibratory asphalt compactor. Just try saying that when you've had a few drinks. The packaging is a lower quality than the Highline series. The outer box has got some information about the wheel machines on it. And inside the box the model is held in plastic formers. Included in the box is the usual Diecast Masters mini brochure. And that shows all of the models available in the range. The shaped plastic formers are held together by poppers. And they are quite tight and you have to pull them apart to get the model out. First up we pull out the trailer and then out comes the CT660 tractor. But there's more, and that's because in the bottom of the packaging are two boosters for the trailer. The only other part to remove is the oversized load sign. Now one thing you may have noticed is that the compactor appears to be stuck to the trailer deck. Now in one way that's convenient because it means the model stays together, but for a more realistic display and to have some more flexibility you can remove the fixings that hold the compactor on the deck. To assemble the model we'll just put a few pieces together and the first is that the kingpin goes into the fifth wheel on the tractor and then we can add on the oversized load sign at the back. Having previously removed the compactor we can put it back on. Starting underneath the tractor the plastic gearbox is modelled as is most of the transmission but there is a bit missing and other details are simplistic such as this plastic box being hollow but the tyres do have a differing tread pattern and the mud flaps are nice and soft right side up and the grille looks good with a small cat logo and the front mirrors are plastic there's some detailing outside the cab and there is a figure inside the cab but you can see that the steering wheel looks huge in comparison and on this model the figure is not removable. The plastic wheels are detailed as are the steps to the cab. And at the back there's simple printed detailing of the lights and there's cat on the mud flaps. The trailer is the more recent XL from Diecast Masters. And it has a strong structure and reasonably detailed axles. Again there are soft mud flaps at the rear. The gooseneck is nicely decorated with graphics. And there's a replica timber deck. And the parts along the trailer edge are represented in the casting rather than being separate parts. At the back there's texturing over the rear wheels. And the rear end looks more detailed with its lights and mud flaps. Two trailer boosters are included with the model and these increase the capacity of the trailer. And they have a similar level of detailing to the trailer. There are more soft mud flaps and the rear end detailing looks good. Moving on to the compactor and it's fairly simple underneath. But the finishing of the paint on the drum edges is not top quality. At the front there's some simple detailing. And looking at the side there is some detailing inside the drum. There are indentations with some texture for the steps up to the cab. And most of the detail in the cab area is formed by plastic. And that also includes the large roof canopy. At the back the grills in the engine canopy are formed by graphics and there's a rickety plastic exhaust. Detail at the back is the same as at the front. Starting with the tractor and the rear wheels are fixed to common axles and there is steering at the front but strangely it's sprung so it returns to the straight position. The model rolls reasonably well in a straight line and it's harder to show the steering because you can't fix it in position. So that means you can't really pose the model being steered. One feature that does work very well though is the tilting hood. And that's because it opens a long way so you get a very good look at the plastic engine that's underneath. 
Moving to the trailer and the wheels are fixed to their axles so they spin together. And at the front there is adjustment possible on the gooseneck. And that just relies on friction at the connection rather than through hydraulic rams. The gooseneck is attached to the deck by a clipping mechanism so when you unclip that you can then pull the gooseneck off. And that means you can pose the trailer being loaded because you can fold down the ramps. Here are the two trailer boosters and they have the same functionality. And fixing them onto the trailer is straightforward once you get over any paint thickness issues. Here is the single booster and we just move the oversized load sign to the back. But if you want to up your game you can go for the two axle booster. And that gives you an even longer more impressive looking trailer. On to the supplier load which is the compactor. And it rolls well enough if you apply some downward pressure on the model. The pivot point is just a simple connection and you can get a decent range of movement across it. Although it's not supplied with this model if you have a spare operator you can manhandle him into the cab and sometimes operators have to be treated roughly. Of course you can also use the trailer to carry other loads. <laughs> This Core Classics model from Diecast Masters is a lower cost way of getting a heavy haulage vehicle with load. As you might expect it is not therefore the most detailed model you can get, and overall the model is of a lower quality. But it is what it is and taking account of all factors it is considered good. <laughs> <laughs> 